Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you that attended. Uh, this conference was, uh, you know, the first step, you know, was, was mentioned in the previous talk that we see plant the world, you know, meeting, talking about their work and so forth, and perhaps we're not doing the good of a job, not necessarily that we're not using big data, but perhaps we're not branding what we do as big data, and that perhaps we need to meet more in having these discussions. The problems that we have in the, the animal side are different than the plant side. There are many commonalities, so we have a lot to learn from them, but also from the human science as well. And so it's time for us, you know, as we're doing today, to meet, discuss where we should move towards to. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, SDA, for funding this meeting, you know, funding the attendance of all of us. So my goal here is try to summarize a little bit of what we learned and I had five minutes to summarize all the breakout sessions, so hopefully we're, I'm able to, to show you a little bit of what we think we need to go to. Um, I need to find which one is here. Oh, it worked. So let's start with uh, a little bit of what we see using pictures, right, to tell a little bit of what the events, what is happening. You know, so can we record, can we use pictures and tell a little bit of what's happening? So this is me on the top. I'm certainly having fun. You can tell by the picture. You need to measure. That's the information that is given from the picture. And you can see that my daughters are freaking out. <laughs> right? So image is very informative, you know? And perhaps some of the things are not so measurable, the, the, the technology that we have. And we can bring this new technology, you know, to bring new traits. But we can measure, I'm happy. They're not so happy, you know? So Natalia talked a little bit about it, you know. Tammy talked a little bit about video recording uh, and so forth. So that's a technology that we need to make use of, okay. One of the nice things that I learned yesterday was a nice way to put was Victor's talk of thinking about a more holistic view of the situation. So I can think a little bit about our conference, right. So in order to make this happen, we need organizers. Okay, so we, our goal, right, our, and what he was saying, finding the optimal level of everything, and our goal is to have an optimal conference. So we need organizers to have this done. So one of the first things that we did, well, let's reach out to speakers. All right, that's one of, one of our duties. If we want to organize this event, we need to find the speakers for it. So and the speakers are actually the ones that are making it, right? Are, now, a lot of what we, that we learned these two days were because of our speakers. And then once we found out about the speakers, we tried to reach out to attendees, you know, uh, advertise information and so forth. And many of you are here because of our speakers, right? So the speakers are very important to bring you guys to this conference. And all of this would not have happened without the funding, right? So funded for the speakers, for the conference, for the attendees, and for the organizers. You know, so it's a somewhat complex system, or, or very simple to some of you, right? And that's a holistic view of what was our conference. And you can be very detailed, like uh, JP Steibel mentioned yesterday, can you measure some uh, nuances of the animals, you know, exactly what is going on? So we can go very deep into this, and perhaps in one of these notes, see that well, for me to get to the conference, I need to fly, you know? And sometimes unexpected events happen and you have a flat tire in your airplane, so you have to drive down to Kansas City and catch another flight on the next day and get late to this conference. But also some of these things are not important when you see in this holistic view. You no, know, was that happened, and guess what? That played no role in the outcome of the conference. So we can step back, see this whole system more holistic view and understand that there are many connections that may not play any role or may actually play a lot of role, okay? And the goal here is we are producing a lot of data. You know, and think that that was drawn to our attention that it's a wealth of data, what can we do with it, okay? So we need to have proper the statistical analysis for the data, right? Uh, maybe we don't know what to do, we need to reach out for help, and 
if we don't make good use of this whole new data being created, we can do whatever we want and may mean nothing, right? So that's a little bit of what we talked about this conference. You know, like we're generating a lot of data and there are many problems that we need to deal with and it's much more complex, but we're here to try to move things forward in our area. So we talked about creating new phenotypes and I think that's not necessarily uh, our problem right now, okay? New phenotypes can be based on fundamental basic science, you know, I'm interested in this biological event, how can I find a new way to measure that? Okay, an indicator trait like Reluca mentioned, or can be more uh, metabolite, antibodies, so forth, a more basic science type. But with the amount of data that we generate, we can also discover new phenotypes that we're not expected to have. So unknown phenotypes mining the data. And also, I think we all agree that ideally, all of these new phenotypes should be automated. We don't have to go there and measure. There is a video, there is some sort of system that measures for us. There is an automated processing of all of the data. It has to be cheap, of course, it has to be accurate, and so forth. So we, we kind of agree a little bit that, you know, we need to create new phenotypes, and perhaps we're in good standards with it. But in the whole system, is much more complex, right? So we're generating, so perhaps, and this is kind of the summary that we try to get from the breakout sessions. Okay, we're generating data and we're trying to identify what are the major problems that we have right now. Uh, I think we came out to the conclusion that we're limited by technology. We want to do X, Y, and Z, and for that I need to go to the animal and collect a sample of that animal. But, you know, we have not reached out to others that may have a very simple and bright idea on how to do that. Okay, so we need to reach out to collaboration to collaborators that have the know-how. Okay, so the engineers they they have a lot of the expertise that we animal scientists do not have. We learned that if I want to measure gene expression in the blood, guess what? I need to buy that tube. I need to go there, measure, take the blood, put in that, and so forth, freeze it. But may find they may find a much simpler way to collect blood sample in the animals. Okay, so we need to reach out to them and see, can you come up with a good idea on how to measure these, uh, the new data? Okay, and a lot of this new data is associated with large data, and we talked a little bit about storage. That's a problem that many of you, many of us already have, and apparently the automated collection of data will only increase the storage problems, and with that, we'll need more money. So this is certainly a limitation. It's not yet so clear uh, what's going to be. So we need better technology to store more data, but also need to sort out what is the data that we need to store and so forth, okay? One of the other big issues that was brought up in all of the breakout groups was training. Okay, so the industry is not fully happy with the training of students. Well they are usually, they only know about animal science or they only know about big data in general. So we need to start, you know, having students that are trained for both. They're animal scientists. They have the knowledge of agricultural sciences and they know how to deal with data. Okay? So it's very important to have that person that connects, you know, the data analytic person, with the animal scientists, and then we have that bridge. Okay? And perhaps this is missing a little bit. So we need to do more work on this, okay? And maybe we don't have all the trainers that we need for this. Well, faculty positions decrease over time. You know, uh, sometimes they're very specific in what you're looking for. I need a person that is specialist on the left wing of a dr dr drosophila, okay? You may find this very specific person, you know? But, so we need to be, ha we need to have those trainers and perhaps we cannot, but we can also find those trainers in other departments. Okay, and that goes down, goes back to, you know, maybe the collaborations here can help a little bit. Now we need to make sure that the industry is also trained for this. Okay, we need to have workshops, train the industry as well. Okay, we have to increase our human capacity. So with the new data, new technology, you know, we have new training to do. And we recognize that this is a problem and we do our best to try to solve this issue. 
And we also need to reach out to our new collaborations, those that also have this knowledge on this data, on this technology, to help us training the new generation of ag scientists. There is also this monster related to all of this, which is data sharing. It seems very blurry how this works, but there are many problems associated with it. There is the ownership of the data, competitivity, sorry, and you know, uh, in the industry sharing with competitors, so forth. But there's also the training component. If, you, if the industry shares data, if other universities share data, you know, we can also train our students. So sh data sharing is good. We're also advancing science in general. There are some legal issues in sharing the data, you know, because of ownership and so forth. Uh, we also had an example of international problems. If it's a USDA-funded project, we need to make it available, but we also have international members uh, they don't need to make it available. So now the U.S. is sharing all the data, but other countries are not. So where are we in this complex game? Okay. There are the standards, the minimal information about a data set. You know, okay, you make the data available, and guess what? You need to spend a whole year trying to identify everything, what those things are, sending emails, and guess what? Oh, I don't remember. That happened three years ago. I don't know anymore. So metadata is also an important issue that we have to consider. And also the stakeholders' input on this, the understanding of how important this information is. So this is, a very, this is needed. You know, so this always needs to be talked in the following meetings from this. Okay, we need to know where we're going to, how to deal with it. And as of today, I think we have a better idea of this component here, and this is still somewhat blurry. We know that we have technology, we have to improve technology, we have to improve training. Improving data sharing requires a whole lot more conversation. Okay? But we also need to make use of those that have done part of it. Okay? So human science and plant science, NSF, NIH, they have a lot of this information on data sharing. You know, we can go back, we can go to them and look at their technologies and look at their training and learn from them. Okay? And all of this, you know, maybe go back to what uh, Victor Zavala was saying, this is a very holistic view. It's a whole system. Okay? So we need to understand it's a complex, but this is a whole system. Okay? For this to work, we need funding, but for this work, we need to show that it's important. Okay? We need to show to the public that this is important. We need to show to the industry that this is important. We need to show stakeholders that this is important, to students that this is important. So there is a lot of value added investing on this, okay? But also, in order to make this whole complex, complex system work, we need the correct infrastructure, so computer power, we need social acceptance, right? The pillars of uh, sustainability has to be environmental correct, profitable, socially accepted, and so forth. So it is a complex system that we're trying to move forward, but we need to make sure that the, we have the infrastructure to continue. So this is the summary that I think we got out of the, the breakout sessions. And with that, I'd like to thank again the participation. And if we have any more discussions, just let me know. Thank you. Is there anything that came up in the breakout sessions that Nick did not touch upon that folks would like to Make a point about. Everyone's tired. They're done already. So I just want to make a comment. If you truly did that on the spot, you are the best. You are sharp. Because I, I said I was in blue group, and that that's blue group. So yeah, thank you. That was excellent. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Any other general comments? Okay. So one of the desired outputs that we do want from this is a publication that we would start to work towards. 
So the organizers, immediately after this, we were going to get together and discuss it to a greater extent. But this is not something that is limited to just us as organizers. Anyone in the audience in which that wants to participate in helping to pull this together at the completion of all of the ideas and discussions in which you've had, we would greatly appreciate your input in terms of doing. So if you do want to do so, contact one of us now. We'd be happy to try as we put together, hopefully somewhat of a framework to try and capture the ideas in which you have had and the discussions that we've had to this point. Put that in place and then start to flesh it out. From a very idealistic goal for myself, I would love to have us moved most of the way through by the time we got to PAG in this process. Because one of the things that Carrot and myself are supposed to do at the uh, NRSP8 workshop on Sunday afternoon is report back from both this meeting as well as the genotype to phenotype meeting that follows up from this. And the more of that we can get done and articulated in a, an actual document would make my life much easier in trying to relay all of the great ideas in which you've discussed to this point. So please, stay engaged as much as possible and make sure that the points that we need, because to some extent, this goes back to Peter's uh, point earlier, that we need the feedback from stakeholders, which is all of us, in order to help in this general area. Because it, A, gives everyone here in, uh, help in order to describe what is the research and what you would like to get funded, whether that is with industry or into federal uh, applications as well. But also hopefully it'll help uh, USDA AFRI and even other federal agencies say, this is where there are needs, there are gaps, there's opportunity in research that needs to be done in these areas. So we hope that it will help everybody in that respect. Um, thank you very much for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedules to come here and interact with the group as a whole. Uh, I think that we probably could easily have taken this out to the end of this day, and you guys would still have been talking about different things. Uh, hopefully you can do some of that before your flights take off. Hopefully you have thought of new ideas, new projects, new collaborations in which you can take off from here as well, and that you have found it as beneficial for yourselves as what we found it in order to help uh, further what is our desire to help this entire area of phenotype collection and data analytics. And with that, in behalf, I think, of the rest of the organizing committee, so Nick, Galerme, James, John, Raluca, and Carid, thank you very much for coming. It was greatly appreciated. May you all have a safe trip home. <laughs>